Good morning. Welcome to the end of week four. Can you believe this? Four weeks down, only two weeks to go. That's kind of cool. And these are weeks are going to go very, very quickly. Uh, I just want to say, really, really impressed with a lot of the group papers. Um, there were some really good things written about, you know, one of the things you don't realize sometimes, unless you sit down and you think about it, or especially as you're looking over some of those behavioral descriptions in the roles, you realize how many roles you actually do naturally assume when in a group. Um, and when I was reading some of them, you know, some of you probably could have ripped off a lot more than five, uh, depending on what group it was, how long that group met and something like that. I know, for example, you know, I was thinking about the last group meeting I was in, uh, where actually was a physical group. And that was back in March, right before spring break, when, of course, Bergen ended up never coming back from spring break. Uh, but during spring, right before spring break, you know, the Veterans Committee got together. There were about six of us. And we met for about 55 minutes. And when I reflect back, I look at the behaviors, you know, the, uh, the descriptions. And I could easily say that out of the 20 roles that are listed positive, the 13 task roles and the seven social and maintenance, I easily assume seven or eight of them. Um, and when you think about some of the things that you say, the way you interact, uh, the proposals that you bring forward, um, it, it really is interesting to see how many roles that you just naturally assume that sometimes it just rips off your tongue, comes off the top. You don't even think about it. All right. Uh, and of course, these are the roles that you naturally assume to achieve that goal, complete a task or to come up with a solution to a problem. I was also very interested in reading what a lot of you had said about having to work through that dysfunctional role. See, that's not an easy thing to do, especially because once you get to a certain place and someone assumes that dysfunctional role, you just can't like get up and walk away. OK, like say, for example, you all go on ahead, finish your bachelor's degree, get your entry level position. You're now making the first real money in your life. Well, now it's a year after graduation. You've had this job for almost a year. Uh, you're making some really good money. You've been promoted maybe twice. All right, you're lucky. Uh, so now you have your own apartment. Uh, maybe went and got a brand new car, or even if you bought a used one, it's a really good used one, but something a lot better than what you were driving as a student. All right, because now you can afford it. Uh, so now you've got car insurance, car payments, uh, rent payments. Uh, rent insurance and all the other stuff, gas, utilities, uh, your Wi-Fi bill, all right? You got a lot of stuff now that you're responsible for. Well, now you're going to work and you're sitting in this meeting where you got to come up with a new idea for a product for your company. And there's that guy who is just the biggest a-hole. And he's coming off as a blocker or, or as an ex a blocker or as an aggressor. Um, and it really is getting under your skin. Well, you just can't get up and walk away and quit the job. You need that job. Okay. So what you have to do is try to keep the positiveness and go ahead and work through that person. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I go back to, you know, some of those old grandma sayings, you know, grandma treat others the way you would want to be treated, honey. Or, uh, you know, you get more, uh, what was it? Uh, you get more. Oh, you get more honey. Oh, how does that go? Where you get more honey than oh, if you're a bee. Oh, what is that whole honey vinegar thing? Now it's I suddenly got. Ugh. You get more bees. Bees get more honey than they get. Oh man, I know this. You guys know it. You know what I'm talking about. All right. Um, but anyway. Uh, yeah, you want to just try and work through, exhaust all avenues of kindness with that person. You really want to do that before you try and move on without them. But unfortunately, you're going to get in those spots, especially because unless you're one of the very few, very lucky people, uh, you never get to choose who you work with. OK, there are very few people on the planet who actually get to choose the people they work with. Otherwise, you got to work with who you're working with. And a lot of times there are going to be people who disagree with you, uh, who don't like you. All right. I mean, I'll be perfectly honest with you. In my department meetings, there's usually about eight or nine of us. And there's a couple people in there who will never be over my house to swim in my pool 
or I will go out after work with and have a, a dinner and drinks. It ain't happening. But yet I have to sit down with them, come up with some new ideas, maybe talking about a new textbook or, you know, how we train the adjuncts or whatever it is that we have to do. And we have to come to an agreement. We have to accomplish a goal or, or achieve a goal or accomplish a task or come up with a solution to a problem. And I might have to do that with someone who I generally will not be uh, hanging out with this weekend. Okay. So, oh, excuse me. I shouldn't be doing that. I know with the COVID-19, but it was something in my eye. All right. Now it's time to move on to your next assignment. All right. Here it is. We're winding down these last two weeks. It is now time for your persuasive speech. And I know a lot of you have been chomping on the bit on this because, <coughs> excuse me, happens every semester. You look at the course outline, the very first day of class, you look at that assignment, and already something starts to jump into your head, okay? What your assignment is, is you are to deliver a three to five minute persuasive speech based on a topic of your choice, right? And what that means is, is that you get to choose the topic. And what I'm strongly encouraging you to do is I want you to choose a topic that you have a very strong opinion about. Long before you started this class, long before you even thought about coming to Bergen, if someone, if like say we were one-on-one -on -one talking and I disagreed with you, you would get very animated in defending like you're wrong, I'm right, and here's why. All right. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm giving you opportunity here to get up on your soapbox and espouse your views, and you just might get a good grade for it. All right? That's what we're looking for in the persuasive speech. Now, a uh, couple of things. Number one, uh, there are two type of persuasive speeches. There's a speech of conviction and a speech of actuation. The speech of conviction is, because see, what the overall goal is of a persuasive speech is to influence the opinion, attitude, and or behavior of your audience. What a speech of conviction does, it goes after the opinion and attitude. What a speech of actuation does, that goes after opinion, attitude, and behavior. All right. You actually, with a speech of actuation, you actually not only want people to agree with you, but to actually take an action you want them to take. All right. Um, so if you're writing a specific purpose statement for a speech of conviction, it would be after listening to my speech, my audience will agree with me. And then you describe the action. Okay. Uh, as a matter of fact, I've got four outstanding, uh, example outlines, uh, for you to take a look at. Two of them are speeches of conviction. Two of them are speeches of actuation. Now, one of them, and I can't remember the young lady's name, did an outstanding job talking about something she felt very strongly about, and she really did. It was after listening to my speech, my audience will agree with me about the Disney characters, okay? I thought she did an amazing job in talking about this, that, uh, what is it, is that beautiful is, is good? Uh, I mean, take a look at it, it is amazing, uh, and it's something she felt strongly about. Uh, so when you do a speech of conviction, after listening to my speech, my audience will agree with me, and then whatever your topic is. In a speech of conviction, after listening to my speech, my audience will, and then you describe exactly what action you want us to take, okay? Uh, as you can see uh, of the sample outlines, Rose, who did hers in the summer a couple of years ago, this was very simple and right to the point. After listening to my speech, my audience will become organ donors. She wanted you to do it. She wanted you to walk out of class after that speech was done and go ahead and become an organ donor. It was simple, it was to the point, and that's exactly what she wanted to happen, all right? So, by Friday, 12 noon, I'm gonna give you till Friday. By Friday, 12 noon, you are to email me a specific purpose statement, all right? Please have it phrased correctly. You've got the examples, I have it written down on the assignment sheet, okay? You have to listen to my speech, my audience will agree with me, or I have to listen to my speech, my audience will. Um, and by Friday, 12 noon, you have to give me a specific purpose statement. Now, once I say okay, and I'm going to be following my email as close as possible. Once I say okay, then go ahead and begin working on your speeches. Because remember, we got Monday, we got Tuesday, and then speeches begin. This is a six-week course, remember, and it's a summer course, so it goes really quick. Uh, now, one of the things that you have with a three to five minute persuasive speech is you are required, again, to have at least three sources. But unlike your informative speech, 
where those sources were used to provide uh, information in order to inform your or educate your audience. This is information you're going to take from your sources that you're going to use to help influence your audience. So there's a different name now for this data that you're gathering. It's, of course, called evidence. Evidence is what you use to help to influence your audience. OK, so it could be statistics. Uh, it could be uh, different examples, uh, but also it could be like expert testimony, getting the word of someone who's an expert. But you want to make sure it's someone who's going to come across as an expert. Uh, for example, let's say you're doing a speech about legalizing marijuana. Your topic is after listening to my speech, my audience will agree with me that marijuana should be fully legalized. So let me move on to my first main point, which is marijuana does not have long term effects. According to John Smith, a 42 year old guy who lives next door in his parents basement who hasn't worked in 18 years. He's been smoking marijuana every day for 25 years and it doesn't have any effect on him at all. Probably not the best expert to ask, but same situation. So let me move on to my first main point, which is marijuana does not have any long term effects. According to Dr. John Smith, a leading researcher at Johns Hopkins Medical Center, in a research project he did over a 10 year period as published in the May 2019 edition of the New England Journal of Medicine, he proved that as he studied casual smokers of marijuana over a 10 year period, they did not demonstrate any long term effects. Now, that is something that you would want to use because that's an expert testimony that would help to influence your audience. That is solid evidence. All right. So there you have it, people. That's your assignment. Remember, you've got until Friday at 12 noon. I'm going to let you have Friday until 12 noon. You get me that specific purpose statement. I go ahead and OK it. You get your 15 points. Uh, and then, of course, start working on your speeches. All right. I look forward to these. OK, I would say typically people do five to eight points higher on the persuasive speech, especially because, again, the organization is the same. The organization of your outline is very much the same as it was for the informative speech. Attention gainer, preview, body of your speech, conclusion, pretty much all the same. OK, you're just now going to try to influence the opinion, attitude and our behavior of your audience. All right. So get to it. I'll be looking over my emails to see if I get those specific purpose statements. And I look forward to your persuasive speeches, people. All right. Have a great one.